to everyone watching and welcome to my channel. My name is Terry and in this video I am starting a new series which I am calling Eurovision Rewind. Now this series is a series of videos where I'm going to take a look at every Eurovision going back all the way from the start in 1956 up until the present day. I'm going to go through each one, listen to the songs, tell you my thoughts and at the end give you my standings for each one from last to first. And in this very first video, I'm going to take a look at the 1956 contest. So without further ado, let's begin. And before we do begin, if you like this video, please click the like button and consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell to be informed when future videos of this sort are released, uh, when all other editions of my Eurovision Rewind are released, and of course Eurovision 2023, which is starting very soon. And please let me know in the comments down below your thoughts on the 1956 contest and who your favourites are and all of that stuff. So yeah, without further ado, let's now begin. Okay, so I have actually listened to these songs previously. Um, I Before I've done this series, I did set up my rankings for every year. So this is not a first time listen, but I'm going to tell you what I think about them anyway. And I've got the um, video ready to go. And there's a link in the description below to the original video that I am watching. So please do check that out as well. But I'm going to start now. Obviously, 1956, we didn't have, or uh, we don't have a video recording of it. We just have the audio version. Um, so, this will all be presented in just sort of stills of the performers. We don't have any live, uh, or we listen to their live stuff, obviously. We don't have any video live to watch. Obviously, a very different time with the orchestra there playing uh, for the introduction. Okay, so we've got song number one, the very first song in Eurovision history, the one that started it all off. Very nice start, nice melody. This one always gives me a bit of a Disney vibe, which I think a lot of the songs of the time actually do. And it's just nice vocals there. It's very sort of nice, soft, flowing melody. So I really do like to start the first minute, that part. This bit here is where I start to lose my interest a little bit. The flow of it just doesn't quite work as much for me as the first part. And then this bit here where she goes to loo 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 And this bit here, that bit doesn't really work for me so much. It takes me out of the song a little bit. And then we go back into the opening part of the song again for the end. So it does pull me back in towards the end. So overall, it's a good song which I do like, but it's the middle bit which loses me a little bit on this one. So song number two was from Switzerland, and for both their entries, they said Bliss Asia, of course, Eurovision legend and winner of the first contest, but not with this song. This is Des Alte Carousel, which is in German. A winning entry is to come later. Of course, in the first edition, there were seven countries and they each sent two songs to make 14 songs in total. So 
quite a bit of a long instrumental opening here before Liszt starts singing. Now, when she does start singing, the very beautiful voice comes through, comes through a very nice floaty melody. A bit like the first one, a bit Disney-ish at times. And I really like the backing singers coming in there with the harmonies. Again, that's very Disney as well, I think. Wow. So I really like this little playful fun part section here. Showing off this year's character and humour. And then sort of change it up a little bit here. It's a bit more sort of up tempo and jolly and jolty. And I think for some like this, it's a shame that we don't have the live recording of her performance at Eurovision to see how she delivered it. And we've got the backing singers coming back in here towards the end. And now we're coming to the very end, we're taking it down low and soft. And again, beautiful harmonies as it has been throughout. way to end it out there with the harmonies and then this nice soft finish. Okay we are starting now and Fud Leclerc for Belgium and of course he was to go on to represent Belgium many other times in the future. Uh, I think four times in total he represented Belgium. This obviously is first of those four. Messieurs, les noyés de la scène. Interesting, Fad was just one of three male artists. Um, taking part in 1956, the other two male artists both coming from Germany. A bit more of a serious song compared to the first two, which, although not upbeat, well, or tempo, it did seem a little bit more lighter in nature. It seems a little bit more darker. I think one of my issues with early editions of songs, uh, I feel like for them, because there's less going on with the staging, I need a melody to really hook onto, to really make the song grab me. And I feel that this one, compared to the first two songs, it lacks that melody. So once it's finished, I struggle to remember it. Yeah, this one it just lacks that memorability factor to make it stand out compared to the first two songs that we have listened to. And I 
yeah, for me at this point, I'm kind of waiting for the song to finish, if that makes sense, unfortunately. It just isn't a song that really grabs me or engages me uh, very much, sadly. I don't know if this is the ending, I don't really remember. It sounds like it might be low. Yeah, and then it kind of just finishes off on a bit of a low note, really. Oh, there we go. Di domani, sognando dopo domani. Next up we go on to Germany and I think this is actually the longest song in the competition in around just over five minutes so it's a very long entry actually in song length and the second of the three Mao singers to appear I mean you sort of start with this sort of a which is quite an interesting start but unfortunately when we get into the end of the song we have this very talky bit and this does actually go for quite a long time and makes up quite a lot of the song and for me I'm just not really a big fan of talking in songs especially if the talking is making up the majority of the song and when we do get into the singing part, it's presented in a very talky way. So we really haven't moved that much on from the beginning for me, unfortunately. And now we're back into sort of a talky part. It does make up such a large chunk of the song. I just always struggle to really connect with the song. But there is like a nice melody there going on here. But I don't feel like the melody is um, strong enough or last long enough to stay in the memory. Uh, what I normally take away with this is this is the song of the talking. This might be the end. Maybe not. It's very difficult to know where the end comes for some of these songs that I'm not so used to. But I do feel as though the song should have actually finished by now. It does seem like it's been, a, for me, a long, a long song. And like I said, a lot of it is all very talky. Uh, and if you like that sort of thing, that's great. But for me, it's not really doing it very much. I think we're coming towards the end now. Die warten seit gestern auf das Glück von morgen und leben mit Wünschen. And I know that this song does very sort of abruptly stop. Tja. Die armen Leute. Yeah, it's a way sort of an abrupt stop, and I am not all really a fan of that in songs either. Uh, but that was the first of the two German eaters. So moving on to France now, their first of their two entries. And just waiting for the applause to finish. Get a bit of a strings again in there. And now, listening to it, I immediately remember this is what I always call the Snow White song. It's got a very Snow Whitey type voice that you expect from most Disney movies, and again, it's another Disney style song. Um, but probably the most Disney in style of the ones so far. There is a nice melody here, a nice soft 
floaty melody. But for me, the vocals are just a little bit sharp on my ear. I know that's probably how it's intended and the vocal style and way of singing with that operatic tone there. But for me, it's not one that I would most gravitate to. And again, like I said, this bit has a nice floaty melody. But I feel other parts of the song don't so much. And I feel like it's a melody that isn't strong enough to make it memorable amongst the other songs. Uh, and like I said, for these early entries, especially 1956, where I don't have any live footage to go on, I'm relying on that melody to pull me in. And this one isn't quite there. Almost, but not quite. I think this is the end. It is a nice end there. And thankfully a shorter song than the previous one. Um, yeah, that was a, quite a nice ending, but as I said, probably not quite for me due to the vocal style. Parole musica di Christian Moving on to Luxembourg, Luxembourg next, and Luxembourg Michelin, along with Switzerland were Jacques one Lafitte. of two countries that sent the same artist for both entries, um, Michelle Arnoux. This is obviously her first of her two songs. Non pas, non credere, è un invito a... And this one is one that, as you can tell, so all the driving is one that I really do like. It sort of gets right into it, no messing about, you know, no faffing. And it's got a very vibe, as you can tell. I don't really know how to explain it, but... It's a very sort of upbeat, jolty, bouncy vibe. And I feel because it's got this sort of upbeat, up tempo vibe, it's therefore the melody is very memorable and it sticks in because it's one of the few songs that sort of properly pop and the upbeat. And I do like this sort of middle section here. Yeah? It does break up the song a little bit, but it keeps up, the, up it keeps the tempo going. My only thing is that this song is only about just over two minutes long and I just wish it was a three minute song because it would be so great but still it's a great song anyway as you can tell and they were all the engineer oh, almost there we go and then a big orchestra finish and yeah I really do love that one just wish it could be longer why well, is it not longer who knows but there we go Interprete Franca Moving Rimondi, on to Italy now, Gian and this is the last of the seven countries to present their first song. And of course, the second half is done in the same order, so Italy will be the last country to perform again of the 14 with their second song. Già premiata l'ultimo festival di Sanremo. And I always feel that when a song starts, this is a very recognisable sort of from a like classical music. So I'm surprised that they were allowed to get away with having that there at the start. It does feel like it's a little bit taken straight off. But then just like the previous song from Luxembourg, this song gets straight in with the jolly and bouncy and fun. And therefore it's immediately a song that I'm going to pay attention to straight away. It's got my attention straight away. Lovely vocals, and I like the little orchestra moments in the background as well. I really like the sort of the instrumental moments in this song. I feel like they really do add to the vibe of the song. Speranze, 
and then we finish. Then they came, we actually finished with the outro of that very recognisable classical music piece there, which is very interesting. But I think this is again a song that's quite short actually as well. I haven't looked, I think this is not much more than two minutes, so again another one. Well, I was in there a little bit longer, which I'd love to have seen that, but there we go. Okay, so we now come round to the second songs for each country and the Netherlands. And uh, first up, we've got Corey Brocken, who, of course, is known to Eurovision fans. She actually went on to win the contest the following year. Um, and I will be checking that song out in my 1957 uh, reaction, which will be coming soon. <laughs> As soon as she starts here, that un unmistakable, in unmistakable voice comes through. I feel she's got a very noticeable, memorable voice. And we're sort of back to the nice, sweet, floaty songs after a couple of more up-tempo, up-tempo, playful songs. I think she actually said Let House too just there, which is quite interesting. For you was it And a nice start. This bit here I not quite so keen on because I feel it doesn't again the melody there is black and a little bit. Um and then we sort of get the melody coming back in again with the instrumental parts here. That's quite nice. And then we come in again, very strong, unmistakable, and unmistakable vocals there. You really has a very beautiful, strong vocal. Moving on to song number two from Switzerland and of course this is this I see you with a winning song or a fan everyone knows that so let's just take a listen and I think that opening uh, part of the song uh, is known to everyone and again nice backing vocals it must be backing vocals just for this, I'm thinking, because they're the ones that I'm most noticing them featuring on. Uh, at first century has very nice backing vocals as well. And I think we've all know this song very well. You know, lovely vocals, nice floaty melody. I might be about to say something a bit controversial here, but I do actually prefer a other entry in this 1956 contest. Um, and of course she does have songs in 1957 and 1958, so I won't say too much about those because they will be coming up in those reactions. But yeah, just in this, yeah, this contest itself, I have always preferred uh, the other entry. But this is such a classic song as well, it's very unmistakable. And obviously it's a song that means a lot to you, if you fans, I would think. Nice, soft, low moment, gentle, peaceful. My kind of only issue with this song, um, when listening to it in its full version, is that it does go on for a little bit too long. Um, yeah, I feel that, because I think it is longer than three minutes, so I think that for for me, I do prefer the songs a little bit shorter. This is just a little bit too long. I think maybe that's one of the reasons why I don't like it as much as a other entry as well. But like I said, that's not to take anything away from it. I do really enjoy listening to the song. Then we end in 
again with a very nice harmonising of the backing singers there. A very nice way for the song to finish. Moving on to Belgium, second entry now. Moni Mark per il Belgio. Okay, now he's starting, I remember which one this one is. So she's got that sort of operatic vocal tone to her voice. A nice floaty sort of. And this is the Ding Dong song, uh, the original Christa Siegfried, perhaps. So I do quite like the start. You know, I think the Ding Dongs are what sort of makes it stand out. And there's a nice floating melody going on there. This bit here, it takes me out a little bit, it slows it right down, but it hasn't really slowed it down in a way that is making it memorable to me. It's picking up now again, which is good. And I think you can probably argue that there is a bit of repetitiveness with it, with the repetitiveness of the Ding Dong part. And I do feel as well that it's one of the early years songs that I feel goes on a little bit too long. Um, yeah, some of them do feel like they are going on a little bit too long. And of course in the early days there was no three minute wall, so some of them did actually go on for a bit too long. We're now moving on to the second of Germany's two entries and the last of the three male artists to take part. Io ti regalo dei fiori, ti vengo a prendere in ufficio. Mamma, ti accompagna allo zoo. Okay, we're going to be getting into this one very shortly. And I've always liked this one because it immediately it gives you that sort of rock and roll vibes. It's, you know, probably the most modern of, of the time entry from the ones this year. It's got that bit of sort of American rock and roll vibe going in there. And because of that reason, it's got very memorable melody, it stands out to me. Oh, that's the one with the, the, the rock and roll fires. So you know. This one really does have very good orchestration as well. I think proving that orchestras can do up tempo fun songs very well. And I'm going to finish it there. Again, I think this is another entry that's quite short actually in length. So again, why am I a bit longer? Okay, so we're on to France's second song. I've just got three songs left to go. This is song 12 of 14. France with their second entry. A nice little... Start. And it sort of gives us again that sort of fun, up tempo, jolly vibe, which I, I, we get quite a few of those this year, and they're ones that are one of the ones that have grabbed me straight away. So maybe that's just my kind of thing. Maybe I prefer the upbeat, jolly, opposed to the more classic chanson style. I think the instrumentation going on here in the background that's kind of keeping me intrigued and then we're back into the up tempo pretty quickly as well so that little slow bit there actually works very well I thought an ultimate entry of the night from Luxembourg Arnaud, and again got Michel Arnoux back. She had Ne Quoi early on, which I really did enjoy. This one, Les Amants de Minuit, 
probably pronouncing that terribly. And you immediately recognise that this is going to be a more classic French chanson style song. And that very nice, beautiful vocals coming through at the start there. But I am immediately thinking, where is the hook and melody in this one going to come from? And as we're going through, it's a very nice, pretty song. But I, there isn't really that hook there that makes me remember it. It's just one of a, of a, a couple of lovely, beautiful, well sung chanson style songs that don't immediately grab out to me. Now we've got this bit sort of a talky section, and as I said earlier on, with uh, the first German entry. I'm not a big fan of talky bits in songs. And I think this is the end. Yeah, this is the end. So it's a nice song, but it doesn't jump out to me anywhere near as much as her first uh, entry did. Parole di Mario Panzeri. And the final song of the night came from Italy, their second entry. Uh, yeah, Italy's second entry, the final song of the night. Uh, hopefully that's about to start now. Anche per Amami Se... And we're starting again, immediately noticing that it's looking like it's going to be a slow chanson type song uh, of course from Italy this time a beautiful focus here at the start I also notice that straight away and there is a nice floaty melody there some nice uh, orchestral flourishes there. And again there. And then when we think, oh, it's going to go somewhere, it stays on that same level. It's very beautiful song, but not one that jumps at me. It sort of stays in that very nice, safe, pack that we've got a few songs of in 1956. Again, nice vocals throughout, nice orchestration throughout, but it just doesn't have that bit that makes it stand out to me. Looks like we've got a bit of a solo orchestra moments here. This bit is sort of making it stand out a little bit more. I do like this bit here. But yeah, as an old package, it just doesn't quite do enough for me. And then a nice soft way to finish off the song. The final song of 1956. So that was my reaction to the 14 songs from Eurovision 1956. So overall I thought it was quite a nice collection of songs. There's quite a lot of samey entries there, a lot of sort of that chanson style slow ballad. Um, but there's also quite a lot, oh not a lot, a few songs there that I really liked. And what I'm going to do now is go from them 14 to 1st uh, in reverse order and let you know where I've placed them all. So... Musical, 
So geht das jede Nacht. So geht das jede Nacht. Das ist... Aprite le finestre ai nuovi sogni, alle speranze, all'illusione. Ne crois pas, ne crois pas que tu seras toujours beau gosse. Ne crois pas, ne crois pas que ta jeunesse... So there we have it, that truly completes my review and reaction to Eurovision 1956. I hope you've enjoyed watching this. Um, and if you have done, please click the like button and please subscribe and hit the notification bell to be informed when all my other editions of Eurovision Rewind are released. Um, I'm hoping to get them all up by the end of this year. And of course, we've got all the 2023 Eurovision news coming out as well. So there'll be videos relating to all of that throughout the season. So please click the like button, the notification bell and subscribe. And also please comment down below what are your opinions of 1956 and what are your favourite entries. Um, and yeah, thank you very much for watching again. Thank you for taking the time to watch. And until the next video, take care and goodbye.